Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Lost Odyssey. In the last episode we went destination hunting on the world map and discovered a few new locations such as the snow fields of the northern land, the Kelalan village, pirate's fortress, and the temple of enlightenment, and the forgotten cave. Along with finding those uh, locations, we unlocked a few ports as well. So we can jump across the world map uh, to navigate it easier. And we also uh, recovered the rest of the underwater items. Just uh, to the north of the northern shore of Ypsilon, in case you were wondering. So with that taken out of the way, we are at the White Boa. And go ahead and head over to Mac, who's on the steering wheel. And choose to depart. Once on the world map, press the right stick and move to the nearest disembarkation point. And go ahead and choose the Pirate's Fortress. Because there is a side quest here that we're going to want to start now. So we can gradually, gradually complete it as we visit the next couple areas. Alright, so once you arrive at the Pirate's Fortress, go ahead and run forward for a scene. So upon entering the Pirate's Fortress, the gondola, which is our transportation device into the fortress, is broken, but said we'll fix it. And there's only one crewmate here, so I guess all of the other pirates are out doing their thing, looking for treasure or something. So it looks like we're going to have to find them. And they are scattered across the world. So in order to find these pirates, make sure Set is in your party, has one of your active party members. And then once he's in your party, go ahead and exit the pirate's fortress. And back on the world map. Our next destination is going to be Kelalon Village. So go ahead and choose that from the destination list to be taken there.
So upon entering the village, you will know of a tournament that's taking place. And it looks like Cook is going to enter it. So with that taken care of, go ahead and equip Cook with her strongest weapon that we have, the Angel Feather. And you might want to go ahead and put a good ring on her as well. I'll go ahead and put the Demolition Ring onto her. And for the accessory, I'm going to put something like Annie Kellalon because hence all the Kellalons around us, we might get Kellalon status onto us. Um, yeah. So with that taken care of, go ahead and head north. And if you have said in your party, then you should get into a battle and find a pirate surrounded by Kelalons. Now this will only happen if said is in your battle party. So make sure you have him in the party. ahead and take these guys out Once all the Kelalons are defeated, you will save uh, Orly. And Sed will tell him to head over to the Pirate's Fortress, which is where he returns to. So now that you saved the Pirate from the Kelalons, go ahead and probe the pot a little bit to the northeast for two Kelalon souls. And then cross the short bridge and head to the west to find another pot. This contains godly dragon tears. And then further northeast is a third pot we can probe. For a seed. Once that's done, go ahead and backtrack to the beginning area and follow the path over to the east to find a royal seal that we can break. And this one will give you the quad element amulet. Now this is the one of the items we've been waiting for. Go ahead and equip that sucker onto Kaim. This nullifies all elements. 
which means fire, water, wind, and earth will now do zero damage to you, which is one of the best accessories in the game. And we've been waiting on that for a while. So as soon as we learn that skill, you can go ahead and replace the current skill elements resistance up, which just reduces the damage dealt from fire, water, wind, and earth because I'd much rather be completely immune to it than to have the resistance uh, reduced. So now that we got that awesome accessory, we're going to want to learn that right away and then equip it to all characters. And in case you weren't paying attention, that was the royal seal that we just broke to the northeast corner of the village. And it contained a quad elements amulet which nullifies all elements so now that we got that taken care of go ahead and head over to the northwest area of the Kelalon village to see a shop And you can stay there to rest to get full HP and MP because you're going to need it. And while you're sleeping, you can check what dreams you have. Now, if you follow this guide, you should have every single dream that you can get. Meaning you won't get any more dreams from here on out. And then to the right of the inn is a shop, the Kelalon store. So this store is selling awesome items, such as Heal Full, which is the ultimate medicine. It fully restores the HP of one party member. So I'm going to go ahead and grab 20 of those. The Mana Prime, which is the ultimate magic medicine, fully restores the MP of one party member. I'm going to grab 12 of them, so I have 14. And the Goddess Medicine, which is a mythical medicine that revives a KO'd alley and fully restores their HP. So I'm going to grab 21 of them, which is $85,000. But it's an awesome, awesome, I'm going to grab 30 of them, just for good measure. It's an awesome item to have, one of the best in the game. And also, we have, wow, a rune stick which costs $32,000. Um, I'm just going to buy one of them. And yeah. I'm going to buy one of them just because uh, we've spent almost $200,000 here. We have $75,000 left, which is pretty crazy. But uh, it was worth it. Oh, and I'm forgetting the most important thing. Uh, there's some pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome stuff here. We can go ahead and buy some Guardian Ore. Uh, in case you're running low on that. And also, check out the fourth tab, which is magic. And for $30,000, we can buy the <coughs> white magic spell Resurrect which restores full HP to a KO'd party member. A very awesome skill to have. So now that we have everything we need, we are left with a measly $41,000. <laughs> Let's go ahead and equip that rune stick onto... Uh, 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on to Ming. So now that we have everything we need, we can check out our ring assembly components because we just got some more guardian ore, which we needed for the crusher ring. Hmm. Nothing really too important. What we need is some adamantine ore, but they're not selling that here. <laughs> uh, so now that that's taken care of, you can go ahead and uh, talk to the Kelalon off to the right here. Kelalime, the Kelalon. And there is a tournament about to be underway here. So, go ahead and talk to uh, the presenter, Kellop. And he will ask if you want to start the tournament with just Cook only. You can go ahead and say, I sure am, to start the battle. Now you'll have to win, uh, I believe it's two or three consecutive battles with Cook. In order to challenge the Kelalon King. So let's go ahead and get this underway. And the middleweight Kelalon, you can go ahead and uh, attack him with a physical attack. Now you're going to want to have Cook at at least level uh, 40, I would say. Have a pretty easy time with these guys. I did it on my last playthrough at like level, uh, I want to say level 37. But this time I'm at, I'm at 49, so I should be able to breeze through these guys rather easily. As long as you have a good uh, weapon equipped to cook in a pretty decent ring, you should be able to take these guys out with one physical attack. And a few will jump in after you've defeated one, another one will take its place. Just keep on attacking. And taking out the Kelalons one after another. There's a total of four different Kelalons that you have to defeat. But they're really easy because one at physical attack with Cook's weak ass <laughs> will take them down. Oh, and it looks like there's a fifth one that wants in on the action. So after defeating a total of five Kelalons, the battle should end. They're no match for me. And after you've taken that out, you should advance to the finals. So go ahead and heal Cook up the full HP before you enter the next battle. And then choose the presenter again.
and you're going to have to take on four consecutive battles in the finals. So go ahead whenever you're ready and choose I sure am. And the first battle in the finals that you have to fight with Cook only <clears throat> is against Kelo Kilo Kelalon, which is a pretty big dude. So go ahead and attack him. It should take a few attacks to take this guy out. And if he uses Kelalon, that will make each one of your physical attacks only do one point of damage. So make sure that Cook is equipped with the Kelalon earrings so that she does not get Kelalon status. You don't want your physical attacks doing one damage. They're no match for me. With two perfect strikes, you should take them out in two turns if your character is at 49 like mine. If not, three or four turns should waste the guy. Either way, he's really easy. Just make sure you have the Kelalon earrings. with the, the second battle in the finals is against the guy called Uncle Kelalon. Now if you want to take this guy out quick, just uh, go ahead and put the Diamond Spirit Band on Cook and use the Spirit Magic Gamble. This should take him out rather easily. As long as it hits for a high percentage of damage. That one was kind of lousy. There we go. Much better. 2,077 damage took him out. So for the Uncle Kelalon battle, all you got to do is equip the Diamond Spirit Band and use Gamble. That should make short work of old Uncle Kelalon. After defeating old Uncle Kelalon, you'll get thrusted into the third battle of the finals. Now what you're going to want to do here is equip the light lens accessory. I hope you have it. Because this guy inflicts blind status. So once that's equipped, go ahead and take this guy out with physical attacks. And about three or four attacks and he should go down and bite the dust. After taking that guy out. 
you will find out that your fourth opponent is Cook's brother Mac. Now we all know who'd w who would win in a fair fight here. <laughs> it certainly wouldn't be Cook. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and throw a healing tank onto Cook to get her HP back up. Hey, hey, over here. And Mac will taunt Cook usually on the first turn. And if you want, you can go ahead and equip the wisdom earrings onto Seth for this fight and use the spell Flara. That should take him out in one hit. <laughs> So now that you've finished all of the finals, which is a total of four different battles, you are now able to challenge the King Kelalon. Alright, so after talking to King Kevalon, he will decide that if you win, he'll teach you the greatest white magic in the game. But if you lose, then Sarah and Cook both have to become his wife. <laughs> so before you fight the King Kevalon, I highly recommend to go over and save your game. And also, I'm saving my game because that's going to conclude this episode of Lost Odyssey. So I'll see you guys back next time where we take on the King Kelalon and learn a very awesome white magic spell. So I'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Let's Play Lost Odyssey.